Let's talk today about some of the most important pieces of property that we literally own and are spending our life paying for. Obviously, a home or apartment or a condo or some sort of residence domicile is a major investment in our lives. We might be purchasing a building for our business, and that's a capital expense, but it's still a large investment from the hard-earned dollars that we put together in our professions, from our careers, and literally away from our family's ability to have free opportunities in life, travel, vacations, whatnot. Literally, there's a mortgage. There's a rent payment. There's something we're paying for. The next large item that we pretty much all have at a certain level of adulthood is literally an automobile. Now, let's really talk about this. Most of us didn't get shop class. It's not true. But some of our technological understanding of cars is variable based on the practicality that technology in automobiles is changing so fast literally today. I have an older car and I really wish I understand more and understood more about what goes on underneath the hood. But mechanics was not something that my father spent a lot of time talking with me about. He literally knew a lot of things as an elder man from that generation. But we talked more about managing other things, finances, business, practically working with wood. We built a shelf together. I had to let that go when I moved, but it was a sad thing because it was something we did together and I had most of my adulthood. Even though it was old and ugly, I always used it because my dad and I built it together. Now, practically, that doesn't mean he was a master craftsman. It's just he had logical skills and we measured everything right to fit all my electronics at the time and it fit perfectly back in the day when there was still VHS tapes. And literally, I had a boom box, if anyone can literally remember what that's about. But right now, what we're talking about is automobiles and our right to have proper help in getting them serviced. Something I've been experiencing a lot lately since the purchase of this sadly lemon, which you'd think in today's world would not be legal anymore, would not be even an opportunity to have happen in the state of Indiana, that you'd think an attorney general would go after every company that sold a lemon to anyone and that if those fools did not do the proper check or they just wanted to sell a new car so they took it in, they should have scrapped the car immediately instead of trying to sell it off. You see, there's literally hundreds of cars on lots when there's people in the world who don't have an automobile. Now, why is that? Practically because people don't have the money, but also because society has placed such a high value on the automobile that we forget that literally people need cars to go to work. And there might be ways to have that car paid for little by little over time by the people who are hardworking, diligent, and really need an opportunity to get their credit back on check. Sometimes in life, I think, why don't they just give a few cars away, literally, to the homeless folks? So not only they have a safe place to sleep at night, but they might be able to produce for themselves a new opportunity in terms of their automobiles, in terms of jobs and career opportunities, or moving to a city that has more opportunities. The state of Indiana is not so bad. Farmers certainly need help here. It's probably practical and logical, but we don't have all the jobs that are putting signs out saying, saying, we're hiring now. In other states nearby, there's a lot of signs out in manufacturing looking for hard-working workers. And I hate to tell you this, but manufacturing jobs do pay well. If you've got the mind to literally put parts on a product or do other sorts of counting and quality assurance things. But I don't want to get into that right now. What I'm literally talking about is the opportunity for someone to have a trusted mechanic to repair their vehicle to like new each time or to repair it to the point where it can still function and perform its duties, which is literally the transportation safety of a human being or a family to places in the world where we live, where we serve in our own capacities, in our own performance, in our own jobs, in our own careers. Now, is that how you were sold that automobile? No. You were literally sold the automobile based on how its color is and what its features are and how slick it feels to you as you parade around the community feeling proud to have that car. But practically, when it comes time to servicing our vehicles, mechanics tell us all sorts of things. Because why? Because we are literally undereducated as a nation about how to make sure our car is perfectly safe on the road and is always going to function the way that it's supposed to from its manufacturing point of sale. In life, it's true, cars can fail over time, just like any product might have a one bad one that's in the lot. But in reality, when we get hit like that, manufacturers should literally stand behind their warranties. 
I'm not saying there should be a lifelong warranty on a vehicle, but they ought to last us a good five to ten years with proper care. When a person purchases a used vehicle, they're expecting some form of warranty, but they're not literally expecting to have to invest the entire amount of money that they just paid to purchase the car all over in a vehicle. That literally has happened to me. But sadly, the man who did the repair completely lied to my family about what it was going to take to put that car back in running order for the next three to four years. That little car has barely made it a year without problems. That mechanic will not stand by his warranties, and I'm out as a family. My mom, my family, my father is literally out five grand. Five grand that could have been invested in a brand new vehicle, put into building a credit of sorts. And I'm just telling you part of my story, but what about your story? How do you feel about auto mechanics? How do you feel when you go get your oil change? I literally just got an oil change. It's supposedly a really reputable company. I have to tell you, I paid twice the price to get that oil change, and I got half the service. Not only did they not top off fluids like they were supposed to, but literally, I was lied to about the state of affairs of my vehicle. I had just had my car in two repair mechanics garages. I have the price list of what it's supposedly going to cost to make my car literally safe worthy on the road. But this place did its little 22-point check and told me that everything on my car was perfectly fine, in terms of the undercarriage and its stability, this is totally opposite of what I was told by a couple other mechanics. Now, literally, who's right? How the hell do I know? I'm not trained as an ASC certified master technician. I'd like to be, because then I would feel much better about my car and my purchases, and I'd be able to check a car over myself and know that it's perfectly sound and safe for my family to drive in. I literally purchased this car used because... I don't like how the car depreciates the minute you drive it off a lot, but also some of our cars are half the price of a house. Yes, we spend a lot of time in our vehicles. And sure, we should have a nice car to keep our family safe in. But practically, maybe the cost of vehicles has gone up so high because we are literally paying the salaries of all the people who produce it, which is absolutely true, and the fact that they don't sell as much as they should, and that's why there's hundreds, literally hundreds of cars on some lots all over the state of Indiana. Mega car companies have hundreds of vehicles on their lots. They could be sold for a lot less, perhaps. They could be sold for at cost. And what harm would that do to the economy? Not much. Everybody would still get their piece of the pie. But I'm talking about practical aspects of building an economy based on what we do have versus a line of credit of selling us this idea that we should purchase something that we can't afford to buy. So literally, are we actually paying for the credit companies in this process, or are we really paying for the value of the car? Now, I don't want to get off track with my topic, but I want to make sure we're talking about things that are of little interest in intellectual ideas that makes a person say, hmm, I hadn't literally thought about that, or oh yeah, that ran past my mind a few times already. But in truth, what I'm really talking about is the right to take a car into a gas station, into a oil change facility, into a mechanic shop, and get a true evaluation with a standardized technology, a standardized mechanical unit, a standardized code reader, if you will, a standardized well-trained technician who will literally go over every single aspect of a car, kind of like a Japanese shotgun, where literally you give your car to a government-oriented body where they check every little thing on the car to make sure it's roadworthy, safe to drive, not emitting bad chemicals into the air or other type of noxious gases, and literally... That's what we need in America. There are a lot of wonderful traits that we can learn from other countries about how they literally solve pollution problems. China apparently has failed completely in this, and it's horrible air in some places that are high up in the Alps that have the drift over from China. I know because I've been on some trains where it was wretched. I can't really remember where I was, but it was somewhere up fairly high in the mountains. But the point is that we literally have to get away from polluting the air. So we have to look at these electronic cars. We have to look at how do they function? How do they work differently than a gas-filled car? And are we really getting all the gas at the pump? That'll be a story for another day because I've got an idea about that, and I don't think we are. This has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications asking the literal question, should mechanics be personally responsible for the repairs, the oil changes, the gadgets that they literally place on our vehicles? 
Thanks for listening.